I went out to Piedmont Park in Atlanta, Georgia. I asked some people about some of their favorite teachers. My name is Daughtry. My name is Diego Christian. Nicole. Leah. I'm Carl. Do you have a teacher that uh, you think impacted you? My sixth grade teacher, Elsie Turnbull. She used to always say and still says, can't has never done and will never do anything. Anything that you put your mind to, you definitely will attain the goal. Mrs. Gober. She was my English teacher. She fostered such amazing discussions and really created a safe space for us to, you know, have discussions and, and talk like adults, not like children. It, it was awesome. This teacher's name is Dr. John Kressler. He is one of those teachers who genuinely cares about his students instead of just caring about their academic record. And so that's the main thing that I loved about him. He's actually become one of my mentors in spirituality and making big life decisions. Mrs. White, she was my first grade teacher. She was just awesome. She was the foundation to my knowledge. She made me excited to go to school because I was not happy to be in school. Yeah, why weren't you happy to be in first grade? <laughs> I guess I was more nervous than anything. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. Mr. Corrigan, uh, AP U.S. History teacher. Can you remember like a piece of advice that he might have given you? Always read the fine print. That <laughs> awesome. probably appeals to you guys as lawyers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. Not to limit my idea of who God is or like what the universe is. He taught me that and sort of guided us in that idea. Always speak up. <laughs> she really was like wanted to hear what we had to say and, and really fostered the confidence that we always had important things to say. The reason why I want to do that is like I think a lot of like lawmakers and a lot of um, administrators want to say, hey, you know, the teacher's job is to drill this concrete. Here's a book of knowledge, and the, the teacher's job is to spoon feed this knowledge into that thing, and that's a child, and that's what they're going to do, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's a very, very limited way yeah. to view education and to view teachers. Um, and I think that everyone has these experiences where it's like, this teacher had a massive impact on my life. They taught me more than just the content, but they taught me how to live and be. I wanted to throw it to you guys. What are some of your favorite teacher memories uh, of teachers that you had grown up? As I think education, I think you're correct that um, schools should be about learning how to think, read and write and being a good person. And if you could do those things, education worked out for you. And if one of those things failed, you it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff, fortunately, we have Google or something. And now all the actual information, you can find it. When I was in high school, I went to the International Baccalaureate um, Magnet Program at Campbell High in Smyrna. They are awesome. They're, a lot of them are still teaching. Senora Roberson, who still teaches here, my Spanish teacher, who was honestly one of my worst grades, but she really taught me that a kind of endurance. And I think that like stick with it. She clearly knew I didn't like Spanish. I got a 54 in the summer assignment because I just stopped working on it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, three months assignment, I literally stopped on like page eight of 20 or something like that. She called my mom the first week of school. It was like, is your son even interested? <laughs> I was like, how is he? But by the end, she was, she was like kind of like urging me along to keep like going and finishing this thing. I clearly didn't like. What I really respect about them in my high school teachers generally is like they walked in and I was like, no, you're already good. So let's get cracking. Cool. It's like, if I, there's nothing more dismissive. There's nothing more empowering than someone just being like, oh no, you you can sit there. You can write a 10 page essay right now by hand. We didn't have laptops back then. Oh boy. It's like crack mm -hmm. out the paper, get writing. Yeah. And I don't know, that's the belief, the assumption, not that's the belief, but the assumption that you would be awesome. Yeah. Cool. And if you had a problem with that, then it was a problem with you. <laughs> it's like they were not like entertaining me. Yeah. Um, when Lance was a teacher and I was a teacher also, we would have like, we, we talked about edutainment where teachers felt this need to razzle and dazzle you with songs and dances. Like Ron Clark Academy in Atlanta, whatever. He was this Sarah, this miracle teacher. I'm gonna make these students rap and clap and get them Ooh, excited yikes. about learning. Fuck you. Yeah. You know what will make people excited about learning is when you're excited about them learning. Right, right, right. And right, you right. sit there and give the most boring lecture the driest lecture, but make it engaging because you actually care about material and you care about me learning it and you care about why it's important. Oh, I mean, I've been really lucky. I've always gone to like really good schools with great teachers. There's two that kind of stand out to me. I think each one is like a different aspect of one of those teachers that really does things right. Um, one is a college German professor that I had. I only had her for one semester, um, but she was so good at teaching and at making it fun but then she followed up with her students. So, you know, every year she and her husband would have um, 
everybody, you know, all of her students that didn't, you know, didn't go home for Thanksgiving would have them all over their house um, really? for, for dinner. Yeah. That's and really and cool. she would have, you know, people over all the time. If she had two students that she thought would get along well, she would introduce them to like, you know, try to spur the discussion. And she was just huge on keeping track of her students and really just like cared. I mean, she was just passionate about it. Um, so I had her for a class 12 years ago and she actually just reached out out no of the way. blue maybe like six months ago, four months ago. Wow. Just saying like, like, hey, I saw something and your name popped up and I want, you know, just want to know how you're doing. And then I guess my other one would be a fifth grade teacher. So kindergarten through fourth grade, I just kind of coasted. You know, I just kind of did my thing and it was fine. But the fifth grade teacher was so detail oriented. Like if you had to do a project that involved drawing something or writing something and it didn't have straight lines, she would send it back. So all of a sudden I'm getting all my projects sent back and I'm having to redo it. And my parents have told me about stories are where I'm at the dining room table crying because I can't figure this out. <laughs> and everything had been so easy up until this point. Right. And she really taught me, you know, that that attention to detail and that, you know, that that, that matters and that you have to focus. You have to do things right. <laughs> like, I can't tell you what I learned in fifth grade, yeah, but yeah. I can tell you a you principle that I learned to apply to my life. She taught right. you. She, resilience to keep doing that exactly and you know that was the first and only time i ever got a detention was in fifth grade and it was for turning stuff in late because none of my prior teachers had really brought the hammer down when i think about these things i do you guys ever read uh like malcolm gladwell's uh outliers or whatever i read i've outliers. read one of his books i, I can't read... remember which one i read outliers is about um how people like become like experts at things right he, he looks at for outliers right he talks to them he interviews them and he talks he asks hey what, what do all these people have in common almost every single one of them said you know the teacher that i had when i was young like the, the concert pianists right who are like amazing prodigy amazing pianists they, they all say when i had a teacher when i was young who made it a good experience for me right early on like the dopaminergic systems in your brain associate playing with the piano with releasing dopamine oh, and so, interesting. Yeah. so when i think about teachers that i think really impacted me i think about the ones that kind of started that like dopaminergic cycles uh mrs hammond um like i don't know it's 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 so weird to talk about mrs hammond now because like she was like literally one of my friends in high school like we were we would spend so much time together she ran the broadcast journalism club mm. um and so like basically we would do the news every day and we would make videos all the time um and basically what i learned in that room w was basically what i want to be like the foundation of my career right which is like hey here's how to make videos and stuff and and um she was just super cool and always but not super supportive almost you know like she would definitely be like she would be very real with you and like be like oh that's that's uh, good like yeah no it was she was real yeah. she was teacher, real i think teachers always make a mistake of being way too supportive like maybe there's yeah. an issue of like oh this is not good enough <laughs> yeah you could do better i guess that's it like knowing well, that you can do better that's my fifth grade teacher right like yeah this is crap you can do better go do better yeah <laughs> in my junior year uh i had a teacher named mrs wheeler who I mean, she was really, really great. Um, and but one thing that she said to me was like, we did this project where we were like, we were like deconstruct deconstructing advertisements. And so like, I did this presentation about um, this like McDonald's ad, and I was like, hey, the, like this is why they shot it this way. This is why these subjects are in here. This is the target market that they're trying to reach. And like, it was like this big diversity play. And it was like, it was it was back in like you know the early 2010s, where like I guess you know I'm wow, gonna, it's oh such a God. weird thing to say. <laughs> Stop eight years telling ago. us we're old. Eight years ago. <laughs> she, she basically told me like, hey, like, you know, you should consider doing this as a career. And she said it just as like an offhand comment. It was nothing to her. And then like it just I felt like a lot of things aligned for me all at once. I was like, oh, um, yeah. yeah. But I think good teacher. I mean, I guess the two elements I was thinking about, like a short memory. When someone fucks up, they'll forget about yeah. it very quickly. Yep. But also yeah. like kind of belief in the person, not as they are, but as they should be. <laughs> it's like they know you could do better. Um, so it's like, I am not grading you based on who you are today because who you are today might be a slacker. I'm going to grade you based on the actual hard worker I think you are. I think that that's kind of what makes for a great teacher, right? Someone who sees the potential as well as they acknowledge where you're currently at, but they also see the potential oh, that, yeah, yeah. where you could be. As a former teacher, um, I know that even in the best of times, teaching can be very stressful. And so right now with the pandemic, we want to make sure that all the teachers who listen to us have access to the estate planning documents 
that they need to feel safe. And so uh, we're going to work with you to find a price point that works for you. Um, we are trying to help as many teachers as possible, especially in the Atlanta area. And so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about wills, trusts, or estate planning, post a comment. We would love to help you. Um, we don't just offer wills and trusts, though. We offer a lot of other stuff. James, you want to talk about it? Yeah, like Noah said, it's more than just wills. We also do things like advanced health care directives, HIPAA waivers for your loved ones, and, and other things that you can do as far as power of attorney to make sure that if something does happen, um, people are going to be able to help you out. So if you're not sure if it's something that we can help you with, give us a call or reach out. Uh, we really want to help and we'll do our best to do what we can. Sounds great, guys. Thanks so much for watching. If you know any teachers that you think could benefit from this, uh, post their, tag them in the comments. That'd be fantastic. Guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.